Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm gonna make another tutorial, another Kydex tutorial, so if you've seen it or if you're interested you might as well skip it, but uh, Kydex tutorial get uh, a lot of views and uh, the tutorials I have are kinda old, so I wanna do this one over and I'm gonna call it the ultimate because uh, I think I've came to the point where uh, I can do pretty good Kydex sheets and uh, in the previous tutorials I left out a little trick there, little trick there of course everyone is different every knife is different, every procedure is uh, different and you know better for one knife uh, different procedure is better for another knife so it's always like you have to make stuff work but this is like the very very universal one uh, and uh, I'm gonna show you how in this case we're gonna be doing a BK7 Kydex sheet and then on the end I'm gonna be combining it with that uh, nylon backing from the original sheet I'm gonna attach the Kydex sheet to the nylon backing from this one so in this case will be orange Kydex sheet what I did I pre-cut already two pieces of Kydex big enough you see how much space I have all around the knife I have nice one and a half inch on top from the you know over the bottom of the handle, nice space on the bottom, good, uh, good about an inch around. Always better. Kydex is pretty cheap as the material itself. Always better to have more around than uh, cutting it very close. Another nice thing is if you keep these two pieces together, it's a little easier to work with it later on because it will keep, uh, it will hold together. In my case, I just happen to have the pieces that I actually had to cut this way. But I do recommend keeping this as one piece, heat it up, and then bend it over the knife like this. Once once it's heated up, and you're gonna press it, it keeps keeps it together, and then you don't have to worry about this uh, falling apart on you when you drill the holes and stuff and like that. First step is put the masking tape on the knife. I do two or three layers, it depends, just to create that little, little space uh, around the knife, around the blade. First off, because not all the knives and all the coatings are same, even if it's production knife. And if you do a Kydex sheet for somebody that you don't have the knife, it will prevent from pro further problems in the future, in, uh, you know, if somebody gets the knife and uh, it will be too tight. And also, if you're doing a sheet, sheet for yourself, it will give you that little extra space inside, preventing from scratches. Sometimes when you get the dirt, you will actually scratch the blade there, if you get the dust or some sand or something. And also, if you get the dirty knife, it prevents from uh, uh, getting stuck up in there. So, I'm gonna put two layers of masking tape on the inside. You don't actually have to be so precise, it can overlap, especially if you are able to take that kydex apart. Doesn't really matter. You don't have to go all the way to the tip. The tip is not that important. Uh, tip you can actually leave exposed just to get that good, good friction on the bottom of the sheet. I'll just rip off that really big excess, but the, the rest I will actually leave there because it doesn't doesn't really matter, it's not in the way. So you see, covered the blade, left the tip exposed, doesn't really matter, I even left these flaps, doesn't matter, it won't do anything. The Kydex will still mold over it and copy the shape really nice. Now, I use a heat gun, heat guns are cheap, $20 for a heat gun like this. And what I do, I set myself, to make it faster, you will see, I set the heat gun on the floor actually, Put the, put the piece of wood like this, put the gloves, very important thing is the gloves, because it gets hot, definitely always use gloves with, uh, with kydex and heat guns, you can burn yourself dead, and what I do actually, is I create like a, like a tunnel, you know from the kydex you see, the hot air blows through it and it heats it, heats it up much much faster than if I would just grab the gun and you know like blow the hot air on it uh, having a kydex laying, laying on the floor it heats it up much much faster and uh, it just makes it all, all easy we're gonna get this ready also so you can see it once I'm ready
can use the toaster oven, you can use your, your uh, regular oven, you can use even a microwave to heat up the Kydex. There is a lot of different ways how to heat up the Kydex. I'm gonna turn it around. You can see the Kydex is getting nice and soft. And I'm almost ready. Well, that's good. Now let me point this down to my to my press. Put the bottom one in. Set the knife to the desired position. Put the top one over it. Clamp it together nice, nice and strong. And tighten, the, tighten it down. Now we just have to wait a couple minutes for it to cool down. And uh, I'll see you in a few. So, it's printed, it's molded and uh, cooled down. You see a nice imprint there. Now in this case what I'm gonna do, since I'm gonna be doing this molly, this uh, nylon backing, I'm gonna align it the way it will go, where the knife is. I'm gonna just outmark the the width of the of the nylon, just up, so I can see approximately how wide it needs to be, so I don't make the kydex too narrow or too wide, so it will nicely fit to that nylon once the shield is ready and uh, next step actually in case the person decides to not use the nylon backing but use the kydex or some other method I want to make sure that they will be able to mount the tech lag because let's for example if I would start the horse from all the way up here they wouldn't be able to mount the tech lag up so I, I'll put the tech lag as high as I can you know, with that little space for the silencers and mark my first hole. So right here. Now I see that the end of the edge is here, so I'm actually pretty good. Right about in the middle from the edge to the where the end of the kydex sheet will be. I'll mark the same one on top of the blade, you know. I see the same line. <laughs> Cannot do it through the viewfinder here so these are about the same height yep and now I'll start marking with the with the ruler I use one and a half inches that's the most universal distance for uh, for s distance between the rivets and again let me do this not through the viewfinder I'll make my drop. Me personally, I like the the natural curves. I don't like going straight and just like doing the thing. So I will actually copy the drop point with the rivets. And now you see on the end, I actually won't make the full one and a half inch. So I will make the three quarter which is half of it which is also the dimensions of the tech lock so I have those and then on the bottom same thing copying the shape here and three quarters I will actually take a closer look 
I think I'm a little too far but actually since we want to put it on this molly backing it might be just fine I'm gonna double check that off the camera but uh, that's it and the next step you will see I will start drilling the holes I'm gonna double check it before so I'll see you in the drill press alright guys so I have the holes ready I had to mo I move them just a little bit closer towards the blade but that's just a minor adjustment and uh, I'm using quarter inch drill bit I'm using the one with the pointy tip for wood because it's a good guide I can clearly see exactly with the tip where am I drilling the holes where I'm doing that so that lets me do them much more precise and uh, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna drill first uh, probably two or four first four here to the bottom uh, I'll drill them holding the knife down nice and tight holding the both plates since I have to be concerned about uh, this falling apart when you push with the drill bit through it might spread the cardex apart and fall in, fall in two pieces and then it might move so I don't have to make sure that uh, it won't move on me so I can set the first couple rivets and uh, I wouldn't have to do that if I had that one piece like I said that it would be actually just folded here but uh, since I did it this way I have to pay attention to that So you see I drilled the first four hole, now I can take it apart, put the knife aside, I'm gonna make sure I clean if I have some burf on the inside, you see like here, uh, yeah you can pick it up, I gotta make sure that I clean it apart so I don't have I don't have the gaps in the, in the two pieces. I'm gonna take first four rivets. Put it back together again. Set them through. This is my this is right hand carry. So I'm gonna put the nice heads to the to the right side. It won't make much difference if you have a good press, good setter for the for the rivets. It won't make much difference how it looks, but it's still a little nicer. So push the first four through and then here's my here's my setup again setup from knife kids I have it in the little vise I have the bottom portion in the vise let me show it to you actually so you can see it I have it set like this because it's originally for the press which I don't have so I set it in here, this is the top part, hammer, it's called 8-8 eight eight, uh, rivets and now the set for the same size quarter inch, that's what they call them on knife kits. Nice couple wax, I normally do it on the, on the mud over there, not on the tiles anymore. When you do that, try to keep the Kydex sheet, you know, nice level and you see how nice it sets. It looks really nice and clear. It's not the cheapest setter, it's about 30 something dollars on my kits, but it works really well and it did, you know, I think I can say hundreds of sheets by now. So since I have this and this cannot move, now I'm gonna just drill the rest of the holes. Let me put it here. And now 
again I'm gonna just open it without breaking that bottom rivets just clean it from those burrs from those pieces of kydex that are inside from drilling so I don't create any gaps you can do it with the knife you can just stick the knife through from the side clean it like that get the rest of the rivets What I use is a 0.08 kydex thickness. That's I think the, the most universal. It's not too thick for the small knives. It's not too thin for the big knives. It's actually plenty thick even for the really big knives. And uh, it's it's not hard to work with. I guess that's I think that's it's ideal thickness. So I have all the rivets set, put this aside, you see everything is set, now what I do is I just take these snips, you know, regular metal snips, and I just snip the excess kydex so I don't have to sand everything down, the excess kydex will go bye bye copying this on the bottom I'm not really concerned about copying the shape of the nylon it's actually because the, sh the that part itself also narrows down on the nylon so from from about here I'm gonna be try to keep it same you can see it's pretty easy to cut it's not that hard That. And now the next part is uh, I use a belt sander for it. Yeah, you can see that. Yep, you see my belt sander right here. And I'm going to show you how I use it. I'm going to put the mask on this. Definitely, even for drilling, I would recommend the mask. I actually have the mask the whole time. I'm normally here uh, just to cover your eyes and your nose, your lungs. to worn out those
I'm gonna I'm gonna put the finer grit just to finish it so it's nice and smooth on the end. These were the finer grits that were flying off the wheels before they are a little too worn out. beveling As you can see it like nice rounded off a little bit That's nice. Now one last thing I gotta do is just uh, trim, trim the insides. The you know as you grind, as you sand it, it uh, pushes that kydex. It kind of like melts it and pushes it inside. So I wanna trim the trim it nice. That excess ugly stuff, just nice and lightly. There is one more trick that will neaten it up. On the end, I'm gonna show you soon. But it's pretty much ready. You see, nice thing. Now we're gonna go in and uh, test how it is, if it needs any adjustments, any loosening up and stuff like that. So I'll see you soon. So the sheet is pretty good. It has a little too, too strong retention. You know, it, you, you heard that super, super positive click. So it's a little too strong. Now all I need to do is just hit up this bottom part uh, with the knife in. You don't have to be worried about any annealing problems, any, you know, ruining the heat treat. It's a couple seconds. It doesn't get that hot. Sometimes you have to be worried, it depends on the knife. This is gravery handle, so I don't have to be worried that I'm gonna be melting it. There are knives, for example, like Falkneven, uh, Thermoran, that you can actually melt that handle, so watch out for that. And of course some other stuff, uh, Cold Seal uses something very similar, that Kraton. So it depends on the material. Don't, uh, I would not risk it if you don't know how it will react. I know this will do, this will do nothing to it, so all I do is just hit it up real quick. can see how it pulls it apart on its own just by going in and out so I just leave it cool down now you still gonna have that dust inside there's nothing that just the kydex dust just make sure that you don't get that uh, sending whatever you were sending with that dust inside because that will scratch your blade So you see nice, very easy to remove, retrieve, pull with the thumb and it goes out. So that would be that part. Now one, one more thing, the drain hole. Now I have this little trick here for a drain hole. It just two zip ties, one zip tie cut in half. 
and then tape together to create this nice little thick kind of you see that profile so what I'm gonna do is just again heat, heat up the tape real quick the tip of the kydex again nothing to worry about with annealing ruining the heat treat only thing you have to worry about if you want to have it nice don't burn the kydex you see it's already nice and soft so I'm gonna stick it in all the way to the tip till I feel that I touch the tip and put it to the press again just to mold that uh, just to mold that uh, drain hole Drain holes are a little overrated. The one very good thing what the drain hole, drain hole is for is uh, when you want to clean it up. If you got something in there, you can just wash it out real quick. But as for the rusting problem itself, it's not gonna save you because once you get the water inside, the water will not get out of there until you actually blow it out with something strong like compressed air or or like really strong blow. So as for the rusting you know that water, the little droplets will be still inside on the inside of the kydex. The drain hole is actually good for for cleaning purposes, not so much for preventing rusting and stuff like that. I just figured I would let you know. This shouldn't take long. This can actually this wasn't heat up too too much. Nice. So you see, I have nice drain hole, nice size. And uh, next thing I normally do, I wash it out with WD-40 to get out all the all the dust from there. I just pour WD-40. I mean. it will create the protective layer that also for your blade and uh, if you mind the WD-40 you know you can just wash it up with water let it dry out now it's like a glove so the shit, is, shit itself is pretty much done, right at this point. Now you have the... I have still that little little bit of uh, Sharpie there. I'm just gonna wipe it down with the alcohol. That's why you don't have to worry when you mark your stuff. If you use Sharpie, it comes right off with alcohol. Alcohol is one thing that's very handy at your shop if you do stuff like this because you clean your epoxy with it, you clean the, you clean uh, your strap with it, everything with alcohol. Very important piece of equipment. And now the last part, last trick on the sheet, you've seen it before, sanding sponges, I just sand it nice to almost kind of like you could say mirror polish on the edge. You will actually feel it, feel the kydex get hot from all the, all the friction, but you will see that really nice finish on it. If you, if you left off with the nice uh, nice uh, fine grit when you are sanding the kydex edge you will you will end up with really nice really kind of almost like a polish yeah you can call it polished finish on the on your edges which is pretty sweet i like it a lot of customer liked it too when i was doing the kydex sheets for people and uh, 
it just makes that little little nice touch to the sheets then I bend it to send out this the cam ramp also Let me show you in detail what I was talking about. Focus camera. You see that nice clean edge there. Nice round. It keeps focusing somewhere else. You see it there, right? Nice, clean, very polished, very clean look. Now orange takes all the dirt so it's a little dirty actually I'm gonna have to clean it up a little more but uh, let's jump to the attaching the nylon backing so now you see I have the sheet I have the nylon backing I'm gonna be mounting it like this align the bottom with the bottom of the with the bottom of the sheet and then the top as it goes you'll see the nice strap will actually come here but the first step you have to do is get rid of the original sheet here, the fr all this, all this whole like pocket. The way I do it, just simple and ugly, exacto knife, new blade, and just cut it right next to the where it's sewn together. Don't cut yourself. Nothing pretty, nothing fancy, but uh, with the next step, it actually will be nice and neat. No ugly, you're not gonna see anything. You see this plastic is actually almost like sewn into it. We just pain in the ass. I'm gonna cut it off on this side so I don't mess up the sewing here. So you see all this is garbage. The next step is I'm gonna take a lighter and I'm just gonna, you know, like when you do the paracords, I'm gonna burn all this cut portion so they enclosed so they don't just keep ripping and strapping kind of closes it creates a, la a layer of plastic Yep, that's all. And now I have the nice backing ready to be mounted like this, you see. Perfect, the only thing is this this leaves out, but I rather really leave the nylon out then it, then I would be doing the copying kydex sheet over because it wouldn't look as nice the kydex sheet and then if you would ever decide to use just the kydex sheet without the nylon backing uh, it would just look like a puddle uh, this is not like this couldn't bother anybody and it's more useful having the nice kydex sheet the nylon backing you you won't even notice that the next step is 
I have this good old trusty screwdriver that I use for the poking and burning hose through nylon and uh, what I'm doing is I turn this lighter on constant heat this up Align my sheet where I want it. And I just burn through it. You see, I burned the hole through it. Now the next step is Chicago screw. Chicago screw, set the screw in, screw it to the first hole, and I'm gonna keep repeating it in uh, the two top ones. Two bottom ones and probably two in the middle. Six screws is more than enough. See, two, two, and two is more than enough to hold it back in. And you don't need to see that. It's you. You just saw how I do the hey, one. Just a quick presentation. I figure I'll show you. So I'm finished. You see, came out pretty sweet. Nice thing about this is it has. You see how how little it tries to bend. Like I'm holding it. You see that. It's a very little bend, it tries to, you know how somehow the handle is so heavy that the knife tries to go this way. Even without a strap, you see how little it goes. So you don't really need to use the strap. Of course, if you strap it in, then it stays pretty much straight down. And I'm going to show you how, actu how nice this actually carries out there. Because uh, it gives you really nice uh, drop for your carry. You see how nice and low the top of the knife is actually underneath my belt, underneath my waistline, which is pretty sweet because it's really good access to it. Especially this longer blade, so you would want to put the tie down. But you see how it is? You don't have to go awkwardly high with your hand. Fits really nice, it's right there. It's it's almost like look, this is this would be the ideal. All the way down. That's what I like on the knives. When I'm out there, I want to have the knife handle there, but that actually requires special drop leg platform. But this isn't far from it. It's uh, you know really nice, accessible. If you put it back here, wherever you know, it's right there. So this actually I do like this that combination for the backers, BK2, B, uh, BK7, BK9, and uh, a lot of other knives comes with this kind of nylon sheet. So you can actually, if you do your Kydex sheet, you can do this yourself and it's very effective. Uh, it still gives you the option that you can take it apart, put the tech lock, do the scout carry, do the cross draw carry, all that good stuff. But, you know, a lot of people likes to carry knives like this. Uh, sometimes for the bigger blades like this, I do like, to, do like it also, or cross draw, in the same position but cross draw. And uh, it works, it works perfect. It's a great platform to do the custom Kylex sheet and uh, they work fine. And uh, I think it came out pretty sweet. Again, my sheet. You don't see no. You don't see no squared piece, squared shapes. That's what I like. Uh, that's what I don't like about most of the Kydex makers. They just make it all simple, you know, straight, little round, straight, little round, straight. It's not my type. I don't know. I guess apparently a lot of people like it. I don't. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed, guys. Thank you for watching. Take care. Stay safe and remember, don't cut yourself.